Welcome to the Sexy Freedom Media Podcast. A place to discuss pain, passion, and pursuits. Yes, yes. I want to feel alive. Breathe. Make some moves. Protect the throne. This is Sexy Freedom Media Podcast. Welcome, everybody, to the Sexy Freedom Media Podcast. It's your host, Helen Edwards, and... January Liddell, aloha. I feel like that kind of just rolls off. <laughs> <laughs> it typically does. That's probably why I say aloha. It's like, oh, it's like water. <laughs> like wow, fluidity, fluidity. Mm. All right, we got an awesome show for you today. We are actually going to go back in time and talk about 10, 10 things that me and January, January really miss about growing up in the 80s and 90s. So let's talk about it. All right, here we go. Okay, so five things I miss about my childhood. And I have so many, but these are just the top five that were in my thoughts, okay? So number one, good music. Number two, trapper keepers. Number three, landline specifically my lips phone uh and i love that and i'll tell you why later number four colorful clothes and number five tgif uh tv shows and saturday morning cartoons so those are my five what are your five helen yes my five were jelly shoes writing letters like having pen pals burning cds with my favorite songs and giving them to my friends sharing the middle seatbelt with my siblings and my number five was playing that's mine with my siblings on jc penny catalogs right i don't even know that song what song is that what song did you say oh you're just writing that's mine that's no 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 It, it was a game we played i don't know if everybody played it but we this is what we played because you know it was kind of like go outside and play and then sometimes we didn't really have anything to do we got bored so (laughs) yeah I'll get to it in a second let's go through the top five first your top five Uh, okay so my top five so good music so my husband and I always have this conversation because I feel like the music back that back then was so iconic and you can just from even 20 years down the line, you remember exactly the words, even if you haven't heard it for a long time. Um, I felt like the music back then was so much, it was fun. And it was, um, I don't believe we talked about sex that often, although maybe it was in there, like color me bad, it was in there. Um, But we didn't really, I didn't pay attention to it. I was like, oh, I like this beat. I like this groove, you know? Um, I do like the beat way back when I feel like um, I can hear the crispness of the instruments a lot better. Like now it's all like computer generated, which is fine. Um, but I absolutely miss good music. So uh, you can find me at my house listening to the 80s and 90s um, and jam into that. And maybe in my car, jamming in my car. So good music. Yes, I, I have an 80s playlist and I have a throwback playlist. And then I've got my R&B playlist from back when. And there, you just can't beat it. You know, you can't beat. My dad used to listen to oldies all the time in the truck when he'd take us to school. And I I remember every morning he'd just play the oldies. And I thought to myself, wow, I love this music. It's so nostalgic, right? When I listen to it now, it reminds me of those times. But now I, I've heard, I haven't seen it yet, but I've heard it from some people that they said, can you believe they're calling our generation's music oldies now? I was like, wow, history does repeat itself. <laughs> <laughs> it's so bad. I know. Even my kids are like, oh, the old music. I'm like, that was like 80s. What? Um, I'm going to tell you, Helen, on the cruise, that's all they play. They play 80s. Well, actually, all majority all 80s. So it's such a fun time. So yeah, good music. All right. So number two. What was my number two? Um, oh, okay. So I said trapper keepers. It was on my brain. And I don't know why trapper keepers was on my brain, but I, I think what I love about the trapper keepers is that it was so thick 
and I had like the Lisa Frank, you know, like the colorful ones. And um, so I just, I loved it. I love that I was able to stuff all my, you know, things in there. I guess I, I did love school. I had a great experience um, both at my elementary and my high school. Like I had, I had a great experience. So um, Trapper Keepers was just a fun thing to have. I don't know why I thought of Trapper Keepers. I don't I think feel- we have that anymore. Uh, I'm not sure, but I do feel like along those lines, um, I mean, I wasn't a big fan of Trapper Keepers cause I wasn't a big fan of school, but <laughs> I was big on coloring up all of my pages, all of my books, all of, I mean, I was that person who, you know, drew on everything, the desk, the books, everything just cause I was always doodling, <laughs> doodling but is good. it was doodling. Yeah. And you know, now I don't know if, I don't know, do kids doodle these days? Do your kids doodle? They do. My little one does. So I know she, she's been doodling since she was three. I think those are the creative mind. They just tend to, you know, doodle. All, I doodled all the time in class. Like you can see like my notes, you know, my notebook. And I had like little spirals and square. Like, I wrote all over. Just the word doodle sounds foreign. <laughs> That must be like a way back when word. Do you doodle? Tell me, do you like, you know, do you Dougie? Do you doodle? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Chopper keepers. Yeah. I don't know why I thought chopper keepers. When you told me, hey, let's think of five things we miss as a childhood. I'm like, what do I miss as a childhood? You know, I'm going to, I'm going to share a story. Okay. So this has nothing to do with chopper keepers, but the story is um, my sister and I, every summer was the only time that we had um, cable. Um, during the school year, we we weren't allowed to wa- really watch TV or have cable, right? So during the summer was, yes, free for all. So she and I were in our living room. We would have like slumber parties in our living room, right? So we were watching La Bamba. Girl, I thought that Richie Valens died right in front of our eyes. I was ball. We were bawling. We were like, Oh my gosh, died in front of us. You know, it's a movie, but we didn't, we didn't know, right? But we were thinking like it was happening in real time. <laughs> so anyway, that was that was the story of uh my sister and I spending summer, you know, together watching movies, thinking that it was real. <laughs> so anyway, all right. Number three. My number three was L- landline. landline. <laughs> With your, landline. I, right away. I had to read it twice and I was like, Oh, she had lips for her phone. <laughs> I did. I had those cute little lips. I really wanted those lips just because I felt like everyone had them. And I'm like, I really want those lips. And they were just so cute to have. And, you know, when you're talking on the phone, like I can't do it with my cell phone. But before I used to get the cable and like twirl my finger in the middle of the cord while I'm talking. And, I'm, you know, and it just was so fun to do that while I'm talking. I guess that was a fidget spinner or right it was kind I'm of like not really sure if they called it anything but I used to do the same exact thing and I loved it there was something very satisfying about yeah. getting your finger mixed up <laughs> and getting yeah. it like all the way wrapped I don't know totally everybody out there like if you're listening let us know like write it right into us or comment on this post when we post it um what did you do were, were you did you like doing that too <laughs> I loved it. And if my cord was long, then I could like bring my stuff like wherever I went. And you know, the phones back then, right? Landlines back then, you're able to go like this and like, it's, it doesn't feel weird, but you really can't do it with a cell phone. It's not the same with a cell phone. Right. So anyway, so I, I miss the, land. I don't have a landline. I, I only have a cell phone. Yeah. Um, When I did have a landline, I was like, why like why do I have a landline I have my cell phone they could contact me on my cell phone right so right my aunt had the uh, Mickey Mouse phone and I was just (laughs) always like when I get older I want to get a really cool one and (laughs) here I am older and I did get a cool (laughs) one it's super tiny and it can go anywhere (laughs) but (laughs) our cell phones (laughs) but it's not the Mickey Mouse phone I know what you're talking about phone I feel like (laughs) Girl, I know what you're talking about. It was the tall one, right? It's Mickey that's standing and the phone that's like right there. Girl. Yes, that exact one. That's so wild. Yes, but I have a feeling there's something like that. But for cell phones, you can actually put your cell phone on it. I don't know. I feel like we should check Amazon. 
<laughs> okay. What was that? Number four. My number four is, oh, all right, look, colorful clothes. So back then, Punky Brewster made it all right to wear colorful clothes and rainbows meant just fun, right? Rainbow bright. I mean, I loved rainbow bright. So I love that we were able to wear colorful clothes and I'm bringing it back now. I wish I can show you my leggings, um, but my leggings have Lisa Frank on them. <laughs> and I feel like with color, it just adds a boost of energy. Um, I think people nowadays, they wear the neutrals and the grays and the blacks and all that, which is fine because hello, I'm wearing black. I love those colors too. But I feel like our world is already like, you know, can be sad and can be depressing. So like a burst of color, it, it just, I don't know, it changes energy. So I miss colorful clothing. I feel like it sticks with you too, because I was really big into the neon colors, but I didn't know they were called neon. I just thought it was like hot pink, hot green, hot blue. <laughs> and what's so <laughs> wild is it's still with me today. I mean, look at sexy freedom media is in neon colors. I have pink, hot pink, and I wear a lot of hot pink and hot, you know, bright colors. I don't do it all the time. Cause I do wear black and red a lot. And I really like neutral colors, like the Browns and stuff. But when I am feeling, when I'm feeling super good, like you said, it does change the energy and I get back into those neon colors. Yes. I, I love that you said hot pink, hot green, hot blue, because that's what I call them. I call them the exact same thing. I didn't know they were neon until much later. I'm like, oh, I just call it hot pink. Yeah. You're like neon. What's everybody talking? Who's neon? <laughs> so yeah, colorful colors. Um. And, you know, I was at a, um, I was at a museum here in Hawaii and this grandma or somebody who was wearing it. No, maybe it was a little girl. It was a little girl that was wearing like these like amazing colors. Like I swear she's from the eighties and I'm like, you're, you're amazing. I love what you're wearing. And oh my gosh, hold on. I'm going to backtrack, backtrack. <laughs> it was my daughter. My daughter was wearing these amazing colorful clothing and the grandma was like, I love what you're wearing. You rock on. And I said, you know, and I said something like, oh, I wish like we should, you know, we would be able to wear something like that. The grandma was like, you can, you can wear whatever you want. And when she said that, I was like, oh yeah, why am I limiting myself to just like blacks and things that make me like skinny? Who cares? I'm like, I'm going to wear like something that makes me feel joyful, right? And yeah. that's what the grandma said. She's like, wear something that makes you feel joyful. I'm like, yes, I love that. Yes, yes. Okay, number five. All right, so my number five is TGIF and Saturday morning cartoons. So I remember as a kid, I was always excited when Friday came. Like Friday was like it because I knew like Full House was going to be on, Family Matters, um, Gosh, I don't know what the other ones were, but those were the two ones that I was really looking forward to, TGIF, right? Uh, and no fail, you know, we would watch it, stop and watch it all together. And it was just a family tradition. And, you know, we sat around and just enjoyed, you know, each other's company and laughed and all that. So I do miss that. Um, Saturday morning cartoons, wake up at the crack of dawn, whenever the morning cartoons were on, we're like sitting in front of the TV and like watching, you know, these cartoons they don't have that anymore because we have Netflix, right? And but they TV. got cartoons all the time now. Cartoons on yeah. their iPads, cartoons on their phones, cartoons all day long, cartoons, you know, just I, it's just everywhere. Netflix. I mean, you could just put it on whenever you want. And I remember it same. I used to run home and watch Fraggle Rock. And I never hear about <laughs> Fraggle Rock. I'm like, what's going on? Where's my Fraggle Rock? And like, where where's the credit for Fraggle Rock? <laughs> I love that song. Makes me want to play it right now. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I think we've, it's kind of like that um excitement, right? That thrill and the excitement. And now I just feel like, oh, we're just, the kids are just, it's so easy. It's like, it's like right there. It's like spoon fed to them, you know, whereas for us, we were taught patience. We were taught like, you got to wait till Friday to watch all the amazing shows, Saturday to watch your amazing cartoons, you know? Um, yeah, it, I do miss the good old days. All right. Number six, jelly shoes. Yeah, those jelly shoes. They're comfy. My daughter had some when she was little. I wanted yeah, some. They still have jelly shoes. 
but mm-hmm. I remember my first pair, it, like literally I could see it in my mind. It was hot green <laughs> with a little bit of gr- glitter on it. And I was like, Ooh, these are fire. And I love them, but they got, they got my feet so sweaty. Sweaty. <laughs> Girl. Yes. They were cute, but they made our feet stinky. And right, sweaty. your feet were sliding all over the place. You couldn't even run. And that's what we did a lot when we were kids. We ran. <laughs> so it was tough. Yeah, not in jellies, but they do look so cute. Yes. Now, if only they made jellies with like odor proof or like, like sweat proof, then I'd be rocking it because I, I can imagine those hot green jellies. They look cute. I'm on the hunt for them still. I was going to say. <laughs> I would I love some should... now. I don't run a lot, so I'm okay <laughs> to wear them for a limited time throughout my day (laughs) (laughs) awesome I think we should rock them on the boat yes down jellies for sure for sure I'm gonna find some jellies all right number number seven number seven writing letters and having pen pals so it's funny that you should post that because just a few days ago um I was in my so I used to go to Ella beach international school when I was in Papua New Guinea and I'm part of that Facebook group so I messaged or I posted on there and I said hey um, I'd love to have like a pen pal exchange with your children my children I'd love to get on zoom so we could see each other you know and then and then have like our kids write letters to each other about like what we love about the area that we live in um I I feel like letter writing is not really there like it used to um I I want to bring it back because I feel it's so important to have like pen to paper and actually have somebody receive you know a letter I know when I got your handmade card I love that by the way I love your handmade card because it shows that you took time to you know to color it and to write in it um nowadays it's like there's text message there's email it's not as like I feel like we've lost that feeling and so I love pen pal I love I love that idea so I I want to bring it back yeah and just for our listeners there are some organizations where they still uh they still want you to sign up and be pen pals for the elderly who are in homes and don't have family that come and visit them so yeah, if you're if you don't know anything about that, you can Google it. You can Facebook group, uh, see if there's any Facebook groups in your area that offer that because I think that's a wonderful idea. Thank you for reminding me. Actually, at my church, um, Kapuna Care Kapuna in Hawaiian is um, like elderly. It's our Kapuna, and so and just like what you were saying, so Kapuna Care is coming, and I think they're going to mention something about like letter writing and cards mm-hmm. and things like that. So they're coming today at my church to talk. So thank you for reminding me. All right, what's your number eight? Okay, number eight: burning CDs with my favorite songs and giving them to my friends. Holla, <laughs> girl! Do you did you ever get like mixtapes from like boyfriend or whatever? <laughs> Did you get that? Oh my God. I was all about the music. Music was my jam. So everybody got a mixtape. I got a mixtape. You know, it was just, it was a, it was a normal thing and I loved it. It was amazing. Yeah. I felt like you can really express yourself when you create a playlist, you know, for your friends, for your loved ones. And, uh, we did it on cassette I know like long time ago we did it on cassette and then of course there were cds right but for the cassette ones it was like you had to like you know with the two fingers I don't know if you do. it's like okay press play and re- press play record <laughs> it was like this you had to be very coordinated to do this I hope you guys all remember this <laughs> I'm totally dating myself oh my god I know exactly what you're talking about yes yes and yes And what's interesting is when you had to write the songs on the tape, you had to write really small and you had to write between the lines. But when you got the CD, you were just like big black marker, blah, 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 like loud. And then you're like, oh my God, towards the end, you're like, I'm running out of room. So (laughs) your songs in the first like four songs or something, they're, they're big, they're large font. And then towards the end, it's all tiny. It's like, (laughs) squeeze that song in there. Yeah, totally. And I hated it when I would use a pen that would smear or like a pen. And then it would just be like, I'm like, oh, man, I can't change this. Damn it. All right. It's for you. You'd make a star (laughs) out of it, huh? (laughs) Yeah, doodle. We doodle. 
that's how we fix our mistakes doodling <laughs> okay number i believe it's number nine sharing the middle seat belt with my siblings this is something i miss because well one of my siblings is already passed and he was the youngest but we used to you know we there was five of us so my mom we would pretty much topple in and it'd be like, put your seatbelt on. Oh my God, there's only one. Share it, you know? Okay, that's it. No questions asked. So um, don't tell anyone, but there are moments here, like in Hawaii, where we're going to transport the kids from one place to another. And it's like kind of a short distance anyway, but the cousins would have to share their seatbelts because there's like a whole bunch of us and it's like only five, right? So like, I have to share your seatbelt. So we do that now. Shh, don't say anything. Um. <laughs> it's a vibe. I mean, if your parents did it, you probably are going to go through it too. Yeah, there, I feel like um, back then, you know, it was... I don't want to say more of a family atmosphere, but um, we had to like be creative. We had to be creative when we were younger, you know, whether it be playtime. I remember uh, we were in New Guinea, my sister. So I have uh, three sisters. So one of my sisters and I, we decided to, um, and my, my little sister, she was uh, probably two at the time or something. She was little. And we had the bright idea. We were like seven, you know, seven and four. And we're like, let's make mud cakes for her. <laughs> so we made mud cakes for my sister. And we were like, oh, let's make mud cakes. But it was dirt. I was like, well, like, we didn't even eat it. So bad. But yeah, the, those, you know, we had to be creative. Um, we didn't have TV. And back then in New Guinea, we had to actually go to a store to get a VHS in order to watch TV because we didn't have like, there were no stations in New Guinea. You would have to actually go to a store, grab a VHS, whatever you wanted. And that's how you, we would watch TV was with the VHS. Those of you who don't know what VHS is, <laughs> how do you explain a VHS? It's like a rectangle. A rectangle. With film. Yes, film, old film in a box, sort of rectangle. Film in a box. Okay, <laughs> perfect. What's your number Are 10? You Number 10, playing That's Mine with my siblings on JCPenney catalog pages. Okay, so I'll explain this one. You didn't have internet. You kind of got bored of playing Red Rover, Red Rover. You know, you're just like, okay, let's uh, let's pretend, right? We pretended a lot. And that's what a lot of kids do. We pretend. So we'd get a catalog and we'd sit right next to each other and we'd smack our hand down, kind of like playing cards, like, you know, war or something. You'd slap, smack your hand down and whatever, whoever got which page, all that stuff on that page belonged to you. I mean, it was amazing because we were, we were a uh, hand-me-down type people. We got, we got the welfare checks and we got the food stamps and we got the, you know, donations from Salvation Army for our clothes. So we were so excited when we could just dream a little bit, but, but it got intense. I mean, my sisters would slam their hands. I, it was my page first, my page first, you know, but, and you'd find out, oh, I got a car. I got, you know, this, not just with JCPenney's, was all types of catalogs, whatever we got our hands on. Oh my gosh. I, and look how far you guys have all grown. I, I think it's amazing. I mean, everyone is, you, you now can do that, like with your own money. You know, what's crazy is I sometimes think maybe that was our original vision book, like a vision board. Because we put our hands on it. I mean, look at my sister. She owned two planes. She's got multiple real estate. Yeah, I'm an author. I got a house. I got a vehicle. You know, all these things. M my other sisters, they got it all too. And it's like, I think these, this was our original vision board. You know, I think um, imagination. Imagination is uh, key. You know, Walt Disney talks about imagination, right? And I feel like nowadays it's not as like, how do I say it? But the imagination is kind of um, not not kept down. But I think because we have like iPads and, you know, all of this stuff is already like inundated. It's like all in front of our face mm -hmm. that children don't get to imagine as much anymore. What do you feel? What do you think? Well, I do know there's an addiction to cell phones and there's an addiction to so social media. And if we don't take time to step away from it and just let our minds work in an imaginative way, 
or visualize our life and our future or our present moment or feelings, we don't get to be as, we don't get to connect with our creative juices, in other words. And I think it's important that we still instill that for our kids. That's why, you know, they're the now generation or some call it the entitlement generation. Uh, but if you kind of take away a lot of things and just give them time, give this new generation time to to be in need, be in want, use their imagination. I think that you're going to really, uh, one, teach them good lessons <laughs> and two, allow them to use their creative juices to 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 think outside the box, to think in, more expansively. So that's just my personal thoughts about it. Uh, well, I loved our childhood. Um, I loved, you know, all the different, um, all the different memories that we had, you know, with our childhood and uh, I cherish them. And I, I think now like moving forward, you know, and as we age, um, I tend to look back and I look back just to say, oh, you know, we, I, I survived all that. I survived all that. And, and uh, I survived that childhood um, because we didn't have cell phones. We didn't have, you know, um, internet back then. And we were, look how we turned out. We turned out amazing. <laughs> I mean, we, you and I turned out pretty amazing, <laughs> but I think that uh, you're right. I I'm so grateful for the childhood we had for the eras we've been through from the stories that we were told from our parents and our grandparents and who told us their stories from their grandparents, you know, it was passed down. And I hope that all our listeners really get a chance to go back in time and find gratefulness. Uh, you know, you may not have had the best childhood. You may have had a traumatized childhood, but uh, if you could step away from that for a little bit and just maybe look at the small things that we mentioned here, like, you know, the jelly shoes and the CDs and the tapes and, it's the, it's little small things that you go, wow, I've come a long way in life, in generations and in where we're at today. And life is just, it's so short and it goes by so fast. So even this present moment, what is it? 2023, the things you see around you aren't going to last forever. These cell phones, they're already, there's already AI and all of these new thing tech coming out where you're not going to need cell phones. It's just going to come straight from your mind and just appear in front of you. I think Apple already has something like that, like a VR uh, situation where it just brings the phone once you put this little uh, goggle piece on. So everything you see is not going to last. These are just fun tools and, and gadgets and gadgets we get to enjoy for the moment. So have fun. Enjoy life. Yeah, I know I did. So I, I hope all our li listeners uh, get to take a step back, um, blast from the past and uh, think about all the things that that make up you and um, all the like a Walkman, right? We don't have Walkmans anymore. Um, uh, the little Tamagotchis. Do you remember the Tamagotchi? There's the Tamagotchi. It's still here, actually. So that's one. So all the little things that we did when we were younger and just kind of recollect that. I think putting all those pieces together kind of helped me be grounded with who I am. And I hope that when you reflect on all the things that you've missed when you were a kid, um, you remember like, because it's attached to a memory, right? So those, the cassette tapes, the music, it's not just the music, but it actually brought a feeling, you know, to you. And, and I hope that you remember that sometimes we can get so lost in this world you know and and forget who we are and so when we think of these things it keeps us grounded right and and it's fun too it's just fun to be like oh my gosh yeah we have to use like a pencil to rewind our cassette tapes we don't do that anymore right but that's like man all the things that we went through as a kid so I encourage you all to list down your 10 things of uh, what you miss as being a child or your favorite things as, as a child and please post them so we can see your list as well awesome all right january tell them where they can find you you can find me uh at januaryliddell.com um or you can find me um on linkedin january liddell or vip finance builders on facebook and instagram where can we find you helen all right all right <laughs> well you can find me on hell of a journey with one l Sexy Freedom Media, my Facebook page. You can also 
go get my book, Nothing Sexier Than Freedom. It's available on Amazon and Audible. If you feel that you this was an amazing show, you like our episodes, we'd love a review on Spotify. You can also review us on iTunes and support our show by buying us a coffee. All the links are in our show notes. Thank you so much, everybody, for listening. We appreciate you. Hello. Want to hear more? Duh. Visit us at sexyfreedommedia.com.